Hey everybody, welcome to the Kate Johansson Show. It's Kate. Today, I've got the prime time player. Oh, franchise player, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> we'll start that again. <laughs> um, <sighs> got a newborn. Up most of the night. <laughs> right. Hey everybody, welcome to the Kate Johansson Show. It's Kate, and today I've got the franchise player of Target Wrestling, Shady Natras. Shady, thank you for coming on. Nice to see you. I hope uh, yeah. you're really excited. Um, I know from speaking with SWN, they was singing your praises of just how much of a nice guy you are. And I think anybody that's following you on social media, you're constantly like, I know for well, you've you've retweeted a lot of my stuff. You've commented on quite a lot, and just that positive energy during what's probably been a difficult time for people in the personal lives due to the pandemic, but also with recent events in the British wrestling scene predominantly, I think you're one of the people that are actively trying to still be positive online, which is really refreshing to see. Uh, well, it's like, it's twofold really. One is um, I kind of, I have the the mindset of if, if we all make British wrestling better, wrestling in general, then it gets better for everybody. So if, if he's going to be better for me, it'll be better for everybody else. Yeah. So why, um, why knock it down? And that's the other thing. I've got far too much things uh, on my plate to be negative all the time, especially online. There's, you see some of the arguments, and it's it's not worth <laughs> worth the time and energy, really. Exactly. Like there's enough shit going on in the world. Then um, why the one? I don't get it because whether it's fans or workers, like people can just jump on. And it's like, why turn the one thing that you can use as the escape and just be so down about it all the time? Absolutely. When when wrestling stops being fun, that's when you've kind of got to take a step back. Um, I know, like, I, I've had times when I've been down on wrestling and I've went through phases of not even watching it. Yeah. Um, but, you've, you know what I mean? It's, it is our escape. Yeah, you get you get a chance to to not think about um, you know what I mean your your sixty hour work week or your bills you've got to pay you you get a chance to escape whether as a fan or a wrestler. <laughs> Funny you should say that. I spoke to uh, Tyson Taylor who mainly worked like the All Star route, and he was the same. He was like, I just love it. Like in my normal life, I've got to talk about mortgages and this and that, and I'm just like, yeah. And I barely speak to him, but talk about wrestling, and I just can't shut up and. I think that's similar with all of us. Like, um, yeah. I know for well, as soon as somebody says they're interested in wrestling, it's like, hey, let's be friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I said to you before um, we started recording as well, I think, like, for your body of work, I think it's so underappreciated and underlooked by British wrestling as a whole. Um, there's a reason why you named the franchise player of Target Wrestling. And I said, like, similar to my local NGW, it seems like you've got such a body of work, that body of work's shown you can work with anybody in the ring, but you've not been getting as many outside opportunities, maybe because it's not one of the, like, internet crowds or internet promotions. But, again, when you've got that body of work, Ricochet, P.E. Williams, Rampage, Brown, and Helico, so many different people, there's a reason why Target constantly put you in that position. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and the fact that these these wrestlers appreciate working with me as well as I appreciate working with them, um, I've seen the likes of the UK hooligans. The, they yeah. were on the... They, they told me when they were on their way up to work one of our shows um, and they were working us, they were like, oh, thank God we've got Shady today. Hmm. And that's, that's, I mean, that shows that I'm doing something right. Yeah. 
So if if the other wrestlers want like uh, uh, happy to work with you, then you're obviously you have a decent standard. Um, and yeah, it is a case of um, the not. It's not really an internet fan company target wrestling. Uh, if you if you were to go and see the atmosphere, you'd think it was as big as a Progress or an ICW. Yeah. But as I say, the internet presence isn't there, so we just uh, kind of do what we do. Yeah. But no, I keep doing it like the stuff that's been happening in Target and again your body of work's been something you can be proud of and hopefully in the light of everything and you keeping your name out there and if it is something you wanted to do in terms of branching out and although you may not be it may not be for a Target show, you I still feel you'd be representing Target because you've been there since its inception. Absolutely. And everyone's gonna be like Maybe not heard of you. Well, where's he come from? Try and get on Google. Oh, Target, and then start looking at Target. And oh, holy shit, he's, he's he's done quite a bit. I might try and check that out. Yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons why I started the Pro Wrestling is Real Life uh, series. Uh, obviously, we didn't have any new footage being able to uh, put out. Yeah. So um, rather than just continually sharing old footage um just with a link uh, i added a, a fancy little intro i and added um a bit of talking whether it's yeah. just plugging the match or as a, I, I leave uh, i leave a space at the end of every show to plug whether it's um a podcast like yourself or merchandise brands yeah. um yeah this the, that's why i've tried to freshen it up so that uh, new new eyes can see what I can do and what Tag can do. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think from what I've seen, the range between like anywhere between 10 minutes to 30 minutes. And it's it's good that you've been proactive with this. Like um, instead of just, I guess, sitting on your ass, it's like, right, whilst I can't wrestle, what can I do to keep to keep it going and um, keeping myself relevant? And um, so try and explain like what you mean by pro wrestling is real life and why that title? Well, the reason why I called it that is because when I film these uh, intros and outros, a lot of the time I, I work a night shift in my, in my real job. I've got, I've got three kids, um, a girlfriend that's, that has a, an illness. Um, I've got an ex-wife. <laughs> yeah. um, so life's hectic. Uh, I I don't always um, I'm not always up to having a deep conversation. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm a real person. This is this is me. It's it's very similar looking to uh, what you'll see when Shady's about. But it's it is me. I I have times when uh, anxiety stops me from filming. Yeah. Uh, it's real problems. Yes, yes, we all have wrestling, but it's everything else that we kind of um, use wrestling to escape from, like we uh, said earlier. Yeah, definitely. And that's why it annoys me when you see on the internet certain fans are like jumping on wrestlers, whether it's for a botch or just because they don't like their style and stuff like that, because it is, it's harassment and it's toxic. And again, you're a real you're a real person you might play this like outlandish character and stuff like that but at the end of the day you've still got those emotions and still got the anxiety and everything else that comes with it um so i think it's a good concept just to try and show people like look this is who i am and show just how genuine you are yeah, it's just just the way of humanizing wrestlers we we yes. are we are real people um and as you say, the likes of calling on people for botches and stuff, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. well, what we do is really hard. Um, there's a reason why not everybody can do it. Um, yeah. And as far as being negative to wrestlers, if you just say, I don't like him because he's rubbish, that's that's not helpful to anybody. Be constructive. Yeah. Um, say why you don't like them. And if, if that's something that they can adapt to, to help them get bigger, then great. But have, have a bit of reason why you don't like and don't get us wrong you can just like somebody because you don't you don't like what they do 
Yeah. But you don't have to like ruin everybody's parade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I just see it as if you've for example, let's say Marvel, you don't like the actions of a character, you're not then gonna berate the actor behind that. And I think yeah. people need to realise that. And I think that's why more and more wrestlers like I know, especially say if they're attached to WWE, so everybody knows that it's them anyways, of being using their personal names, want to show that they're not that person taking a stand for themselves. But yeah, I think people like I think social media is giving way too much power um in this day and age, especially within the wrestling scene. But to go on like more of a like a lighter note then how how did you get started? Who was it that was training you? Because I know in your early years you was teaming with your brother. Okay, well, um, uh, we first uh, started training under a guy called Shaq Khan in Blackpool, um, and we would found that he was the local, the closest school to us. Because yeah. um, at the time there was only really Hamlock. Because this was nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Um, so then we found. We found this school in Blackpool, um, got totally ripped off, um, paid a ton of money, got taught very little, and then and then he just ended up not turning up. Wow. So, okay, well, that's done with. Um, so we moved to uh, training at uh, GBH in Stoke, where Dean Allmark yeah. was helping train. And this was just before Dean had went... Uh, full on with all star yeah. um so it was it was there where we got started and that's where we had our first match and our first match was in like 2001 so it'll be 20 years this year wow <laughs> congrats <laughs> congrats <laughs> uh, <laughs> it just makes me laugh like without fail dean gets mentioned by the guest <laughs> every single time um even when i'm interviewing people from Australia and they've never been to the UK and Dean's never been to Australia but they're like I want to come to the UK and train under Dean Allmark yeah he's, he's, he is outstanding he, he's got he's got his his act down to a T and yeah. that's what it's all about really yeah. um, so to be fair how, how did you feel when that first promoter ripped you off because like if anybody's listening that's thinking about getting involved in wrestling. I know it'd be a lot harder for a promoter to do that now, um, or a trainer. Um, but didn't that set you back? Didn't that make you think, mm, don't know if I want to do this? Um, well, luckily, it was myself and my two older brothers. Yeah. Um, and we kind of had our mind and heart set on, we were going to do something in wrestling. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as I said, to th- like 99, 2000, it was, uh, it was a quiet time on the British uh, scene. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it was just a case of, well, what can we do now? Because we had the bug now. Yeah. Um, we had, we had trashed the house far too many times. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's time to move on. <laughs> um, so it was, Jay, that you teamed with, did you have a brother wrestle as well? Uh, XL, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, my younger brother also wrestled with, with us a few times. Um, <laughs> so all four of us have actually worked. Um, Are you the last yeah. one standing then? Hey, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay helps uh, at the Target Wrestling School. Yeah. Um, he's, he's one of the trainers there. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much the one... Uh, the one still standing. <laughs> how does it? How did it feel at the start then for it to be like a family affair and all three of you are breaking out, starting to wrestle, and like you said, you trashed the house too many times, and here you are now actually being able to do it. It was uh, it was great, um, and we just once again we kind of kept to the natural character, yeah. um, and that it fit our mold of being three of us, so whether it was a tag and the third one being there, or we'd often, when we when we changed different promotions, we'd kind of switch around who was tagging with who. Yeah. We'd change who was the singles wrestler and who was the tag. 
so it was it was good because we we kept it fresh and we all kind of had our own different style that meshed together really well yeah no nah, that's great um am i right in thinking like in your early years you did all-star as well i did a few all-star shows yeah yeah what was that experience like working under brian it, it, it was i i understand why hardcore wrestling fans don't like the all-star style mm. i love it it's it's an easy family show yeah. um that's where you work on your character and it's yeah it's it, they were fun for me i, I enjoyed working there uh, i i did feel a lot of uh, a lot of nerves because obviously you want to perform well at somewhere yeah. like that but yeah it was fun who were some of the people that you was working with i know in one of the tags was robbie dynamite yeah um yeah robbie and uh, who was he talking with steve steve strong i think his name was okay um yeah, just just wrestlers like that. It was uh, there was no no big names, but I know we did a lot of rumbles with people like Shark Boy and yeah. PN News, and uh, they were always fun. <laughs> no, I can imagine. Like anybody that talks about like the rumbles and any of the camp shows, just really enjoy it. And I think like if you're if you are a wrestler, you at least need to do it once, um, just because if you're wanting to make it to say that TV level. There's no better training ground than All Star because a lot of the time, maybe not even wrestling fans. It might be the first time they've ever watched wrestling. They're just on holiday. Yeah, um, and that's that's one of the things that um, I think a lot of people uh, underappreciate, especially even wrestlers. Yeah. Um, if you get yourself over in front of a, a camp show audience which aren't interested in wrestling and are just there to occupy the kids yeah then if you're if you're in front of uh, fans that want to to boo and cheer then it's going to be easier exactly and going forward then i know a couple of again it was when the wrestling scene may not have been striving as much you'd been working wzw and ttp both of those then becoming inactive. Um, what are some of your like top memories for those promotions before we get on to like when it ended? Uh, WZW, the the biggest uh, one there for me was Peter Williams. Yeah. Um, it was uh, that was my first uh, international opponent. Um, so that would have been when PT was like top of his game, X Division, TNA, Red Hot. Yep. Um, so yeah, it was uh, that was pretty nerve wracking, but um, a lot of fun as well. It was um, I I always hate the thought of these big matches, but yeah. I always enjoy doing them. <laughs> Which I don't know if that's uh, a bit sadistic of myself, but uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it was it was fun. Yeah, and it was a lot of. A lot of good talent came through WZW as well. So, yeah. And TTP, the biggest match for me there was uh, uh, El Generico. But um, I also got to work uh, Pac, uh, Norm Dar. Um, plenty of uh, other names came through there as well. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was a good learning experience. Yeah, because that was like when, obviously, El Generico and Pac were still... Um... I'll say like the smaller in the internet darlings, but they're still internet darlings. And um, again, you said you're always like quite anxious, but you enjoy it because is it because it pushes you? Because you know you may have to try and step up rather than working somebody where you know ah this is going to be easy. Um, we know what we're doing. It's testing yourself to improve yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I always want to be the best professional wrestler I can be, yeah. whether that's you know what I mean. WWE champion or target champion. Yeah. Um, however, whatever level I get to, I want to be the best I can be. Um, and you need these great wrestlers to to work with. Um, so yeah, it is just I I want like I said earlier, I want wrestlers to go. Oh yeah, he's a good worker. Um, and that that's that's a big pat on the back for me, which makes me want to perform harder. So. 100%. So, with that being said, then, um, 
how did you feel when both of those promotions had closed? Because they were two of the places you was doing a, like, a lot of your work. And again, you started out, you had a canny of a, uh, you had like a rip-off merchant of a trainer that did away with your money. And then a few years in, WZW closing. And then the next place you've got, um, I think it was like around 2012 with TTP. Was it like, when's this going to end or what was well, your... TTP ended because it um, uh, evolved into Target. Okay. So it got rebranded and kind of uh, got a rocket, rocket strap to it and it kind of took off from there. So I was, uh, I was lucky that way. <laughs> <laughs> How come it was rebranded? Um, well, we were kind of sat at a certain level and... We knew it could be bigger, yeah. so so the rebrand and uh, like it got onto one of them uh, millions of Sky channels at one point. Um, yeah, it just it, it got it got rebranded, got um, some some more uh, oomph behind it, really. Yeah, um, yeah and it kind of took off from there. Ah, brilliant. What's your role with Target? Are you, are you just a performer or do you help with anything else? Um, I, I help with the training. I, yeah. uh, I kind of help creatively. Um, I don't book, but uh, they do ask us uh, my opinions. Yeah. Um, and other than that, I'm just a performer. So with the coaching aspect, like, what's your favourite part of that? Seeing, seeing the wrestlers progress. Um, when you know, we've been lucky that some of our lads have been on with, you know, I mean, Raven and uh, Blue Meanie, yeah. Too Cool, and that's that's a great feeling for us, knowing that they went out there with them and uh, held their end of the stick. You know, what I mean, it's it's good. Have you faced somebody that you've helped coach to begin with, and then they've broke through? Yeah. What's been your favourite moment then, like one of your favourite students that have come through, you've got uh, to wrestle? Probably uh, Carnage, because um, uh, I, I was his first match, yeah. and he he struggled with the performance side. Um, and then we managed to get to a level where he took the Target Heavyweight Championship off me. Yeah, and the reaction from the crowd because he had turned from uh, heel to full full blown home uh, hometown yeah. baby face, and then none of them. Uh, I don't think any of them expected the title switch to go through, and yeah. like, he, he was in tears. It was, wow. it was such such a good moment that it was just like, yeah, we 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 did we did a good thing there. No, definitely. And again, Carnage is somebody that's mainly worked target, and it brings me to the debate again before, where it seems like a lot of the target, is, as well as places like NGW or even maybe like WAW, where the the not promotions aren't really looking. And it's a bit like All Star. I've had the conversation with many people that work the All Star circuit, where people aren't aren't looking and. If you can get that reaction in one place, you can get it any place, in my opinion. And I think that's why Target, uh, um, I think skyrocketing and stuff like that, whilst the wrestling scene's changed massively with NXT UK and the speaking out, yourself um, and Target training that crop and you're getting those megastars that are going to get a better reaction than all yeah. these other like top stars in the UK. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and we kind of we do kind of have them have our shows in our own little bubble. Um, yeah. You people appreciate the the names that come in, but they they don't always go. Okay, well, I want to see him more than I want to see the likes of a Carnage or a yeah. or a Luke Ross. Um, yeah, they they all as I said, they all hold up there their end of the, the bargain so it's it's always good for for us to be able to adapt and that's that's the other thing because um i've been around wrestling long enough to know that just because a card's been announced it means uh 
doesn't mean the wrestlers are always going to be there. Um, <laughs> and that, that, can, that can be for any reason. Um, so sometimes you need to adapt quickly. Um, yeah. And having having a group of performers that can be uh, top level for target, having them able to stand in is is great. Yeah, um, definitely. And I think that's why there's no worry of British wrestling's dead, what people like to say, where when you've got companies like yourself bringing through your your talent, that's what that's what you're building the name off. It isn't everybody that's working all the internet dialing shows. It's the people that have that connection with your crowd, and that's that's more important. I think some promotions think, well, oh, this guy's real popular, so I need to bring him in to get the internet crowd. But the internet crowd may not come to watch that because they're already seen it at five other promotions that they're really liking. Yep. Uh, and and the other thing is, uh, you want them to come back. Yeah. So it's all uh, it's all well and good having uh, the top uh, indie names on show one, but if they're not on show two, are the fans going to come back? Exactly. That's what you need to kind of be thinking thinking of, think of the future constantly. Yeah, definitely. So to take it back, like again, franchise, like you're the franchise of Target Wrestling, you'd gone with BT Gun to crown the first champion, BT going over and holding it for well over a year, and then you finally get in it, only to drop it, I think, was it a day later to T-Bone? A day later, yeah. <laughs> but even with all that going on, you've still been getting all these different opportunities before you'd then get it for the lengthier run, which we spoke about where you drop it with Carnage. So which title, like, Winning moment, did you prefer? Would it have been the first one or the second one? Um, uh, I don't know. Either of them. Uh, as far as uh, championship runs, my, my high octane one was uh, uh, probably the one I enjoyed most because that's where I got uh, most of my uh, big name opponents. Yeah. And it was all uh, maybe a, a two year run of my character turning heel and yeah. then um, eventually dropping the title to Paul London. Um, and that, it was it was all like one big storyline, which yeah. because it was done so subtly, a lot of people didn't realise that, oh, hang on a minute, all this started way back then. Um yeah. The heel turn, uh, I basically told them I was going to turn heel before I turned heel, but nobody's seen it. Nobody's seen yeah. it coming. Um, uh, when I worked Roderick Strong and Chris Masters, after they beat me, I refused to shake the hand. Yeah. But then I um, then I, I put a promo out saying that I apologised um, and I shouldn't have been doing, been acting like that. Um, and then it led to when I eventually turned on medallion and people didn't see it coming. <laughs> and <laughs> when, you can, when you can get people to, to buy into stories, um, that's when you can have fun creatively. Um, yeah. The title, the title matches that I'd, I'd retain the title by um, getting disqualified, hitting, hitting them with the belt behind the ref's back. Um, yeah. All I every month, Every month it would be a slight change, but it came to uh, my mystery opponent because I'd beaten everybody, uh, Paul London, who people from Target knew I had a history with. Um, we kind of went through all of them finishes and they didn't work. Yeah. So then when he when but they also thought, well, he's an international star, he's not going to win the title. Um, and then he did. So he was like, <laughs> oh God. And that was, it was the reaction for that, and was another great one. I think uh, I think that I get the best reactions when uh, drop titles. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's when you know you've done your job, though. Um, when you can make people get such a reaction for beating you, that's when you know you've got it. And um, and it's good that I, I I love storytelling in wrestling. I think it's it's my favorite form of wrestling, and 
it's the fact you've been dropping all those little seeds where they didn't see it coming, but you'd already wired them to expect it unconsciously. So it wasn't a heel turn where somebody's like, well, that doesn't make sense. They yeah. didn't see it coming, but because you've done all these little things, when it does finally happen, like the penny drops and like, ah, yeah. And then it's they start put they start working backwards and seeing where it all began. Uh, and people, a lot of this, as you say, a lot of the time people don't see it, and a lot of it is subconsciously you do yeah. it. Um, I worked a tag match with um, it was myself and Mikey Whiplash against DCT and Mark Coffey. Yeah. Um, when I was the high octane champion and I was kind of going to be feuding with DCT. So after he beat me in the tag match, um, I accidentally left the belt in the ring. So he picked the belt up and everyone went, he's going to win that. Yeah. When I beat him, I beat him and he doesn't, doesn't win it. And people, <laughs> oh, I thought we had it this time. Yeah. Just little things like that make such a big difference in the long term. Definitely. So speaking of like the high octane run then, because I know you had that on the line against Jay Lethal, which also had the Ring of Honor World title on the line. How does it feel to even have that match sanctioned to say you've wrestled for the Ring of Honor World Championship? Unbelievable, because, you know what I mean, I, I remember getting the, the first, I don't know however many uh, Ring of Honor shows on VHS too. <laughs> so to to then be able to challenge for the title was a great experience and and it was um it was a lot of fun we we kind of had a good chemistry together so i think yeah. uh worked well yeah especially with jay lethal i think he's he goes down as one of the greatest ring of honor world champions of all time and that's including like all of the golden era of ring of honor i think the way he carried himself and he i think he made he made the title um I think he he did some great stuff and he was always somebody that would willingly come over to the UK and try and help people and things like that. So what was that experience like then as a whole to, one, again, have that title on the line, but the match itself against somebody that was at the top of his game? It was uh, it was good because we wanted to... You know, I mean, everybody knew that um, I wasn't going to win the Ring of Honor World title on a target show, which is understandable. Uh, so we kind of had to think of a way to get a clever finish. Um, and we used, he used the belt first um, before I got disqualified for using the belt. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun. And thinking of, as I said, thinking of uh, creative ways to do something with somebody the standard of... Uh, Jim is only going to improve myself. Yeah, definitely. What other matches of that high octane run specifically stand out for you? Um, the Shane Strickland one. Yeah. Um, he was somebody that we kind of clicked with right away. Um, and a lot of the Tiger fans weren't really sure of him. Yeah. Um, and by the end, they wanted him to come back. Um, so that was that was a big one. Um, try and think who which of the other good ones that we had. Um, and Angelico as well. That was yeah. a good one um, because he was actually um, I wasn't actually meant to be working him. I was actually meant to be working Paul London, but uh, Paul had got injured, so um, uh, Angelico stepped in, and yeah. Uh, yeah, we had uh, we had a blast and. Uh, that was yeah, that was a good one as well. Oh, brilliant! It's a shame, like although it's great to be facing on Helico, it's a shame the Paul London injury happened because again, you talk about that history you had with him. Then he beats you for the high octane when nobody else could, and now you've got the target championship. Yeah. It'd have been real good storytelling if, for the fans. Uh, well, is Lightning going to strike? Yeah, strike twice. And it was, it was like. It was a, a big disappointment from uh, all of us, from myself to the target team to to Paul himself. Um, we were all good. It kind of didn't uh, play out how we wanted to, but as I say, you have to adapt. Yeah. So for those listening, like again, we've you've mentioned like some like big profile matches. What can they expect if they watched if they give Target a chance and went out to try and watch some Target wrestling? 
um, just good quality wrestling. Um, we we kind of cover all bases with our shows. You you'll get a a, a fast paced match. You'll get a couple of big heavyweights brought in now. You'll get some a good tag match. Um, yeah, you get a, a good mix of everything, and and that's what I think you need. Um, yeah. yeah, you might not have known some of these wrestlers, but if you give them a chance, you know what I mean. You'll you'll uh, enjoy some of them at least. Yeah, because again, from just even looking, you've got so many um, good young talent as well. I know Jake McCluskey has been on some shows. You mentioned Lou Cross earlier. Um, who is it personally that you think people should try and come that's from like Target and that deserve to be more places? Um, Chris Kendall, he's he's a good young heel. Um, Owen Michaels, he's going to be, he's only in his, like his first year or so. Yeah. Um, and Luke's another great face. He's, he's a very likable baby face. Um, and, and a not a one not trained by us, uh, but is, uh, pretty much NXT UK bound, uh, Josh Terry. Yeah. Uh, Josh is outstanding and, uh, him and uh, Paul London are probably uh, my biggest rivals, so always enjoy working them. No, nah, brilliant. Because um, I know, like, Soldato as well has worked Target quite a few. Um, I speak to Soldato on, we've got a show called The Money Way with Shane Money. Um, and me and Soldato are, like, recurring guests for the round table and stuff, and he'd been singing the praises of, like, Target. Um so it's 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 great to see, and I know you've been venturing out a little bit more. Um, you've been working Discovery, haven't you? Yeah. What's that been like for you? Uh, it, it's been great fun. Um, they the fans there are very similar to the Target fans. Yeah. You get a good mix between um, uh, your internet fans and you just your wrestling fans, whether it's like a family or whatever. Um, so yeah, and my character fits in perfectly. Um, as the dislikable bad guy, um, <laughs> I kind of kind of feel I'm probably one of the the biggest straight up bad guys there. Yeah. So um, I think I kind of work well. Um, yeah, l- loads of fun, and they've got a great team up there. Yeah, because I know a couple of the single matches that you've had there again, Josh Terry and BT Gun were two people you've obviously got history with. Um, target so did that put you at ease the fact that you fair single matches because again it's a crowd that may not be as used to you but you're getting to work two people you're so familiar with yeah um especially the one with josh because i know we kind of uh we have a few tricks up our sleeve that especially with myself they don't maybe expect um because the they often see a, a not very flashy side of myself i yeah. know that you know, like I bust out a Spanish fly on with Josh, um, and then like the the one of the finishes we did was um, uh, just before his shooting star press, he did a Canadian destroyer on the apron, uh, and that's something that we've done before. So do you know what I mean? Yeah. We we knew it was it was going to get a wow reaction, and then as I say, then it set up the finish, and people kind of went, okay, well, this. Uh, this loudmouth, miserable guy, he can actually wrestle as well. <laughs> so I, I like, I kind of like having that in my back pocket that if I need to go, I can go. Um, yeah. But yeah, but... Oh, brilliant. Like, I hope, because I know, um, like, that's why you're qualified going on, um, like, SWM, because you, you're now working in Scotland and you've worked in Scotland a bit of your career. And what, what else are you wanting to do with your career? Like, what are your goals? Wrestle, wrestle uh, as many places as I can, as high a level as I can. Um, depending on how uh, this year unfolds, um, hopefully I'll have at least two new places to debut for. Yeah. Pencil in, and as I said, just a case of waiting to see if uh, COVID allows it. Yeah, fingers crossed. Because when I spoke to Dean Omark, he mentioned like his anniversary year got wiped out because of COVID. So he's had to put it on hold. So hopefully that's not going to have to happen with you. Hopefully it's not going to ruin too much of 
um that like great milestone and um i know you'd been working a couple of pcw shows as well haven't you yeah and i know they've put out like they're kind of doing a fresh restart they're looking for everything is that somewhere you're hoping to wrestle more again yeah absolutely um and it's it's somewhere i have uh, been in contact with um and yeah hopefully i can get something there i think uh uh, I worked the Lionheart tribute show with uh, against Dave Birch, and it was a cruiserweight title match. Um, and considering we did it cold, I think uh, I think it went over well. So kind of maybe if uh, get a bit of uh, heat under it, we could do something uh, exciting. Yeah, I oh, know. Fingers crossed for you, because like I said, and for those that are uh, like listening. The body of work you've got for Target is anybody in any company be proud of that. So hopefully yep. we can start getting you more and more places. And I think again you're doing the right things, Joe. And again that positive energy, um, I think it's it is really appreciated. I know, especially for myself, and I'm sure for other like content creators, the fact that um, you're so like warming towards us and. You try and support ourselves and stuff like that. I think it's only going to be seen as actually we've had quite a lot of shitty stuff going on in British wrestling. This is somebody that's genuinely nice. Let's let's give them the opportunity. And the th- the thing with the thing with sharing content creator stuff, all it takes is a retweet. It's, a, it's no time at all to to press a button. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, I can branch out more places and. Uh, um, I always feel that like I can uh, provide uh, some sort of addition to a show, whether it's uh, in a, a main event type match or put us on with one of your local guys in the open and I'll uh, help them. I, yeah. I, I'm not, um, I don't have an ego to the point where I don't want to put people over. I, yeah. If you want to build a star, I'm quite happy to make them look a million dollars. You know what I mean? It's, it's not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know nah. what I mean? It, it, for me, for me, if I can make make somebody look like a star, then I've done my job. Yeah. And that, that's what it's all about. Well, it's like what we said. We've you spoke more highly on losing to Paul London and losing to Carnage. I know Paul London's already a star, but in terms of the storytelling, but and losing to Carnage than winning those titles. Yeah. And that just that just proves it the fact that seeing these younger especially with Carnage seeing the younger talent get that sort of reaction is more rewarding for yourself absolutely um at the end of the day it's um whatever reaction the match gets at the end if it's positive it everybody that's in, involved in the match got that reaction yeah it, it's not always a case of he won so they all cheered for him the, maybe wouldn't cheer for him if the if the other his opponent didn't do their end of the bargain. So it's it is teamwork. <laughs> no, hundred percent, I agree with that. Um, so if somebody in, in like the area that's wanting to get into wrestling, then where where do they need to contact to try and train under yourself? Uh, it's probably best to go through the Target Wrestling Facebook page, and that's I think that's just. Uh, Facebook wrestling, uh, facebook.com forward slash target wrestling. Um, and yeah, just contact them. And as soon as training's uh, available, get yourself down. Um, it's, it's affordable. It's very welcoming. We have a good range of, of shapes, sizes, ages, uh, males, females, anything, anybody uh, is welcome. And you're not going to run away with the money. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> Oh, Shady, like, thanks, man. Like, it's it's just great to talk to, like, genuine people um, and people that deserve the more recognition. Um, so, again, thank you for coming on. And where can people, like, find um, your content, your social medias, target wrestling content? Um, for myself, uh, at Shady Nattress on Twitter and Instagram, uh, facebook.com forward slash Shady Nattress. Um, and uh, if you search Pro Wrestling is Real Life on uh, YouTube, you'll be able to find my videos as well. Um, and Target Wrestling, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. There's uh, there's 
loads of videos from uh, Target Wrestling available. Ah, fantastic. And I'll put all those in the description so everybody do go check it out. Um, again, it's just support people, like you said, with the retweets and things like that. And um... I started uh, Project Wrestling Unity um, because I'm aware that if if I share everybody's uh, stuff by myself, yeah, there's far too many people that think negatively about it. Oh, he's only doing that to to kiss ass and all this, that, and the other. And that's not the case. I just want the the stuff out there so people can see it. Help yeah. grow. Um, so by having Project Wrestling Unity, we kind of have a central focus for uh, content to go out from promotions, from wrestlers, from podcasts, merchandise, anybody that puts wrestling stuff out. Uh, we want to share it. I think I think that's that's a good thing um, because it gives people a hub as well if they're just wanting good content and to see what's happening. And again, like some of the stuff that you'd retweet, for example, like Free WL, and it may be like other smaller like other places that aren't getting that recognition. And your again, the key word there is unity. I think people need to. Um, work together a lot more i think i think if more companies do put egos aside and try and work together it's only going to help both of them in the long run absolutely that's as i say that's that's kind of the idea behind it so hopefully the more people will get um uh, wanting stuff shared if if people want to share stuff just tag project wrestling unity on twitter and there it'll get shared brilliant so everybody you can find that at wrestling unity on twitter as well so make sure you do go give them a follow and they've got the big cartel as well. So try and support them because they're going to try and support us, especially as content creators and local companies. Yep. Oh, brilliant. Well, Shady, again, thank you for coming on, mate. Like we'll have to try and do it once the world's gone back to normal. We've got some more stories to tell. And um, yeah. when you make a couple more debuts, like you mentioned, where hopefully get them penciled in, we'll have to reflect on branching out a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, brilliant. Well, everybody, make sure you do go follow Shady and uh, Pro Wrestling Unity on social media. Check out Wrestling Is Real Life. Hit like, hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Friday morning.